The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 59, American. Lucky Strike, first again with Tobacco Man. First again with Tobacco Man. More independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. There you have the findings of a recent impartial survey which reveals the personal smoking preference of tobacco men. Auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. Yes, the survey shows Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. First again with tobacco men. First again with the men who can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So light up a Lucky. Puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So for your own real, deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke the smoke, tobacco expert smoke. Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his gang are appearing this week at the Palace Theater here in Cleveland. Right now, Jack is in his dressing room in Rochester. is helping him make up for the next stage show. Let's look in on it. Uh, Rochester, how long do you... Ouch! How long do you think it'll... Ouch! Be before... Ouch! Ouch! Boss, hold still or you'll knock the tweezers out of my hand. <laughs> All right, but try to go... Ouch! It's your own fault, boss. If you'd buy a razor blade, I wouldn't have to pluck out your whiskers. <laughs> I can't get this close a shave with a razor. Okay, I'm through now. Good. I have to go on stage again in a half hour. Gee, I'm glad business is so good. It was swell in Detroit, too. What was the total receipt for the box office in Detroit, Roger? We took in $93,267.43 and a Hoover button. <laughs> A Hoover button? Who put that in? Hoover. <laughs> Hoover? Yeah, he ain't worked in 16 years. <laughs> oh. Now, Rochester, I'd like oh, to... Oh, say, boss, you better give me a little more petty cash. I had to pay the cleaners three dollars and a half. Oh, oh, I didn't even know my stuff came back from the cleaners. Where is it? Well, I folded your slacks and put them in the trunk. Mm -hmm. I brushed your coat and put it in the closet, and I parted your hair and put it in the drawer. <laughs> oh, is that my hair? I've been throwing at breadcrumbs all morning. <laughs> now, hold still, boss, while I finish making you up. I gotta put a little more mascara on the eyes. Uh, there. Thank you, Rochester. You know, during our last show yesterday, when the spotlight was shining on me, I heard a woman in the second row uh, turn to her friend and say, Oh, Mildred, don't his eyes look like twilight on the blue waters of Lake Erie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame her, boss. Your eyes are really beautiful. I know. It's a shame. <laughs> It's a shame you have to blink and close them every once in a while. <laughs> yes, especially here in Cleveland. There's so many people who paid to see them, you know. <laughs> anyway, you better finish the... Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Chester. Hello, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Jack, uh, I brought you some coffee and sandwiches. Thanks, Mary. What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, you'll find it out soon enough, so I may as well tell you. You know that big life-size picture of you out in front of the theater? Yes. <laughs> well, some kid with a crayon drew a mustache, whiskers, and long curls on it. <laughs> Low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like a cocker spaniel with padded shoulders. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. A thing like that can hurt business, you know. <laughs> and they're on a percentage, too. Oh, 
Oh, calm down, Jack. You weren't mad in Detroit when someone touched up your picture in front of the Fox Theater. Well, that was different. I'll say it was. They painted a fan in each hand and you broke the box office record. <laughs> yeah, that picture even fooled me twice. I bought tickets myself. <laughs> By the way, boys, I've been meaning to ask you, do you want me to go out and buy you a pair of those elevator shoes? What for? Well, when you do your love scenes on the stage with Miss Marilyn Maxwell, she's taller than you are. Oh, well, that doesn't bother me. Well, it should. I caught the show from out front, and you certainly couldn't approve that love scene you do with Marilyn. What do you mean? Well, when you kiss her, you're supposed to put your arms around her and tenderly draw her up close to you. Huh? You're not supposed to grab her by the earlobes and pull yourself up. <laughs> Earlobes, earlobes. Why don't you stop making things up? I'm finished with your face, boss. Here's a mirror so you can see how you look. Hmm. Well, say, you did a wonderful job, Rochester. Gee, there isn't even a trace of a wrinkle. What'd you use, a new wrinkle cream? No, putty. <laughs> putty? <laughs> Mary, what's so funny? Before a man can make up your face, he has to join the plasters union. <laughs> Look, Mary, I'm nervous enough as it is without you coming in here and all... Oh, my goodness, everything happens at once. There's the door and there's the phone in the other room. I'll get the phone. I'll answer the door. Oh. How do you do? My name is Mink. I'm the manager of this theater. Oh, oh, won't you come in, Mr. Mink? Thank you. You know, you look uh, very familiar. It seems that I know you. Well, you should. I used to be in vaudeville, too. You and I were on the same bill together in Sandusky. Say, that's right. In 19, uh... 1928. I'll never forget it. You were celebrating your 39th birthday. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I wasn't 39 years old. You see, I threw that party to celebrate what a sensation I was that week. We took in $39. Thirty-nine dollars. Yeah. Oh, um... That's all right. That's a... With good luck, we may have a party here. Yeah, with good luck, you'll be here on time. So I mean, <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Mink, I do remember you as... <laughs> I do remember you as a vaudeville actor. How, how come you gave it up? Well, I just played it smart. I saw my act was falling apart. I was getting old. I was washed up, so I quit and became a theater manager. Gee, I... I wonder if... No, no. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Benny? Well, I thought maybe if you spoke to someone of the theater owners, you could... No, why... Why should I do anything for Fred Allen? I mean... <laughs> Anyway, thanks for dropping in, Mr. Mink. You're quite welcome. It was nice seeing you again. Oh, by the way, when I'm working on the stage, I wish you'd turn the microphone up a little higher. People can't hear me beyond the third row. Oh. Well, as soon as we get people beyond the third row, I will. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Oh, Jack. What? Jack, I'm glad I answered the phone. It was my sister, Babe, calling from Plainfield. Oh, your sister, Babe, huh? Yes, and she has a wonderful news. She thinks she's engaged. Babe thinks she's engaged? <laughs> I mean, doesn't she know? Well, she's not sure. Her oh. boyfriend got down on one knee, but just as he started to speak, the battery and her hearing aid went dead. <laughs> Hey, is there any other news from home? <laughs> yes, they told me that she was... Oh, see who's at the door, Rochester. Yes, sir. More excitement in here. Is Mr. Benny in Rochester? Yeah, come right in. Oh, boss, it's Miss Maxwell. Well, <laughs> uh, hello, Marilyn. Come on in. Sit down. Well, thank you. Hello, Mary. Hello, Marilyn. Look, Jack, I don't like disturbing you in your dressing room, but I had something I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, that's quite all right. What the... Uh, hey, what... Marilyn, how come you're wearing your hair down like that? To cover my earlobes. They're six inches long now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were certainly pretty when we started. I mean... <laughs> 
But, Marilyn, I do want to thank you for your cooperation during this tour. You're really lending a touch of beauty to our vaudeville engagements. Well, thank you, Jack. Uh, Jack's right, Marilyn. I caught the first show at the palace, and you certainly look beautiful in that black gown. Oh, you mean that strapless one? Yes, it's really gorgeous. That's right, Marilyn. And all week long, I've been meaning to ask you something about that strapless gown. Uh, what, uh, what keeps it up? The Cleveland censor. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pretty good. You, you must have brought your own writer with you, I think. <laughs> now, Mara, what number are you going to sing in the next show? Hooray for Love. Oh, oh. that's a new one. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Mary, would you like to hear it? I certainly would. Well, all right, here goes. Oh, just a minute, Marilyn. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes, who are you? I'm a hard carrier. I brought you some more makeup. <laughs> Oh, good. Just dump it in the corner. Go ahead, Marilyn. Let's have your song. Love, love, hooray for love. Who was ever too blasé for love? Make this a night for love. If we have to fight, let's fight for love. Some sigh and cry for love. Ah, but in Perry, they'd die for love. Some waste away for love. Just the same, pray for love. It's the wonder of the world. It's the rocket to the moon. It gets you high, gets you low. The ones you get that glow. Oh, some beat the brains for love. Other fellas miss their trains for love. Screen stars emote for love. Even politicians vote for love. Kings lose their thrones for love. Lovers disconnect their phones for love. Some break the rules for love. Just the same pray for it. It's a lovely day for it. Just the same hooray for love. Well, that's, well, that's a wonderful song, Marilyn. Wonderful. I'm sure the audience will like it. Well, thanks, Jack. By the way, I haven't seen Dennis around all week. Where is he? Dennis Day? Well, Dennis isn't here. You see, when we went to the railroad station in Detroit, he got mixed up and took the wrong train. Well, where is he now? Well, if the Republicans can't decide on anybody, he may be our next president. <laughs> anyway, we'll... We'll probably... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, girls. Hello, Phil. Hello, Phil. Well, two new looks with one old schnook. <laughs> uh, Phil, don't be so smart. Hey, Jackson, this dressing room you've got here is wonderful. Mine ain't got nothing in it. Well, Phil, if there's anything you need, just take it out of here. Okay. I'll take this. Put that down. That's rubbing alcohol. <laughs> No, there's no telling what that'll do to your stomach. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Phil. It's too late. The bottle's empty. Well, to each his own. <clears throat> Imagine anybody. Hey, now look, Jack. Phil, turn son. around. Your breath is scorching my soup. <laughs> you know, Jack, I think Phil ought to watch himself a little bit, especially here in Cleveland. After all, Cleveland is Bob Hope's hometown. Mary's right, Phil. You know, the people in Cleveland think so much of Bob Hope that I'm surprised we even got in here. No kidding, Jackson. Do they really think that much of hope here? Do they? You know those white lines that run down the middle of the street? Yeah. Pepsodent. <laughs> they put it on with a toothbrush yet. Look, Jackson. 
This might be Bob Hope's hometown, but I heard you played here long before Hope even thought of being a comedian. Well, I didn't know that, Jack. When did you play here before? Oh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Phil, how long ago was it? I don't know, but when Jack was here, the Cleveland Indians were scalping people in the Carter Hotel with a wigwam. <laughs> Okay, Wanga, okay, gee. Hey, look, look what time it is. Say, Marilyn, you better get ready for the next show. All right, Jack. Say, Marilyn, I noticed during the first show you wore those lovely long false eyelashes, but during the second show you didn't have them on. Well, Jack told me he was the star and made me give them to him. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Jack, come here a minute. Okay. Bend your head down. Like this? Yes. Here, Marilyn. <laughs> Thanks. Come on, let's go to your dressing room. Oh, well, I didn't look good in them anyway. Say, Rochester, how's the house out there for the next show? Is it packed? Yeah, very good, boss. Very good. That's fine. You know, Rochester, I'm doing everything to try and set a new box office record. I know, boss, but didn't you go a little too far when you made the ushers buy tickets? <laughs> Well, if the orchestra boys aren't complaining, why should they? And by the way, uh, how, are we, how are we doing on the, on the popcorn? Not so good since you substituted chicken fat for butter. <laughs> yeah, I never thought they'd notice it. Well, Rochester, I'm kind of hungry. Open those sandwiches, and will you please get me a glass of milk? Yes, sir. Phil, what do you have? Bicarbonate of soda. Bicarbonate of soda? Yeah, something happened to my stomach when you mentioned milk. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Phil. Forgive me. Look, I'm, I'm going in the other room and lie down for a minute. Okay, Phil, but take off your shoes if you're going to. I don't... Now, who can that be? Come in. Pardon me for disturbing you, Mr. Benny, but may I have your autograph? Certainly, certainly. Who shall I make it out to? Uh, Bob Feller. Bob Feller! Feller, it's certainly a pleasure having you drop in to see me. Well, Jack, when I saw your name in front of the theater, I just couldn't walk right on by like everybody else. <laughs> oh, you mean you, you bought a ticket and saw my stage, though? I sure did, Jack. I thought you saw me. Uh, when you took a bow, you know, you knocked a bag of popcorn out of my hand with your eyelashes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me wipe the chicken fat off your sleeve. <laughs> Well, Bob, you're still with the Cleveland Indians, aren't you? Uh, yes, this is my 12th season, Jack. And you're a pitcher, isn't that right? That's what it says in my book. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You wrote a book, didn't you? How to become a pitcher. I read it. Uh, you know, maybe I should. No. <laughs> Not after that game today. Not after that game today. Oh, that's pretty good. You must have brought your own writer, too. Hey, Jackson, how do you expect anybody to get any sleep around oh, here? Oh, Phil, come on in. I want you to meet Bob Feller, pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Oh, hiya, Bob. Hiya, Phil. Say, Phil, uh, you're a pitcher, too, aren't you? Me a pitcher? No, I'm a musician. Didn't you see me leading the band? Oh, is that what you were doing? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Gee, I wish I could do that. Why? And with a wind-up like that, there'd be no one that could hold me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. And say, Bob, I meant to tell you, I like that nice stadium you have here in Cleveland. Have you seen it, Phil? Yeah, it's a wonderful ballpark, and right on the edge of Lake Erie. I saw a game the other day, and... Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. The other day when you were playing Boston, you only had eight men. Oh, no, no, we had nine. No, no, I counted everyone on the diamond, and there were only eight. Oh, you could only see eight. When Ted Williams is up, we put the left fielder in a canoe. <laughs> teach you to ask questions. Now, don't... Well, Jack, Jack. I'm here, Don. Well, Jack, I've got the quartet with me, and don't you think... Wait a minute, Don. Get... First, I want you to meet Bob Feller. Hello, Don. Well, I'm certainly glad to know you, Bob, and I'm particularly glad you're here because the quartet's going to do a number dedicated to the Cleveland Indians. Say, that'll be swell. And Don... Hey, wait a minute, Don. Why is your coat so wrinkled? Well, uh, I was at the ball game Friday night. It rained, and they used my coat to cover the infield. <laughs> Oh, yes, I read about that. One of the ground crew got lost in your pocket. There. 
Well, Don, where's the quartet for the commercial? In my other pocket. Oh. Well, bring them out. Oh, hello, fellas. Hmm. Don't mind that, Bob. I have to pay them extra if they talk, you know. <laughs> All right, sportsmen, we haven't got much time, so let's hear the number. Okay, hit it, boys. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me a package of lucky strikes. That's the cigarette everyone likes. So let's pop, pop, pop on a lucky. Just remember the name. For it's one, two, three lucky strikes at the old ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Young Bobby Feller, he pitched today. They made two home runs, but he won anyway. So let's run, run, run for a lucky. When they're put out, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three lucky strikes at the old ball game. Wait a minute, boys, wait a minute. Boys, don't dance. Not run. Boys, stop dancing. Wait a minute, fella. Wait a minute, boy. Wait a minute. I'm so embarrassed in front of Bob Feller. They said, why is it every time we... Oh, Jack, Marilyn and I would like to know... Oh, come on, girls. I want you to meet Bob Feller. Bob, I want you to meet Bob. (laughs) Bob, why are you staring at the girls like that? Well, if I had half the curvings they've got, I could have beaten Boston. (laughs) Very good, Bob. Very good. Bob, this is Mary Livingston, and this is Marilyn Maxwell. Hello, Hello, Bob. Bob. Hello, uh, say Mary. Yes, Bob. I feel as though I know you because I met your mother about two years ago. My mother? Really? Uh, Yes, she pitched against me in Plainfield. (laughs) That's funny. I thought she was in the National League. (laughs) You're both wrong. Her arm went bad. She's wrestling now. (laughs) All right. Well, Bob, we'll be going on stage in a few minutes. Why don't you wait until after the next show and we'll all go out to dinner? I'd love to, Jack. Uh, Do you mind if I call my wife? Not at all. Which reminds me, Jack, you ought to know my wife. She comes from Waukegan. She does? I didn't know you married a girl from Waukegan. Oh, sure. Her name was Miss Winther. Winther, Winther. Oh, I not only know her, I used to take her out, Marcella Winther. No, no, that's her mother. (laughs) Uh, My wife's name is uh, Virginia. Let me see, her mother. But it can't be. I remember carrying her books to school. She had long blonde curls. Yes, with a little freckle on her right cheek. Yes. Oh, that was her father. (laughs) Now cut that out. (laughs) Say, Bob, I'd like to ask you a question. Isn't there some guy from radio and movies, some fella that's part owner of the Cleveland Indians? Uh, Yes, there is. Well, you know, I I own the Waukegan Bloomer Girls, and I was just wondering if... Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob back in his hometown of Cleveland to watch the Indians play Hope. <laughs> Telling you all, if you use Pepsi like the baseball players do, you will be keeping Bob, feller. <laughs> he did it today. Please say hello to me or please, something. Please, please. Well, here I am. I saw both games today. What a team here. You know, they don't have big league baseball in Hollywood, and I'll tell you why. It's tough sliding into second base with a bare midriff. <laughs> wow, this happens to be my Nothing program. Nothing for the tailor, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a cinch we'll be cut off the air today. <laughs> oh, but it's great being home again. All my relatives met me at the station yesterday, and I was really touched. I I have a lot of relatives here in Ohio. I have one brother doing fine in Canton, another doing five at Columbus. Bob, will you wait a minute? Please. Who is this? A house detective? Please. (laughs) Hey, you you might as well quit. You're not getting paid for this. You know. (laughs) 
Don't ruin our finished gag, will you please? My relatives met me yesterday morning with a big brass band. That is, I thought it was a big brass band. It turned out to be a lot of spittoons going to the Republican convention. <laughs> and it was different when I lived here years ago. This time, the cops drove me from the station. <laughs> of course, the city has changed quite a bit. I can remember a lot of little things about this town. I can't seem to get them on the phone, though. <laughs> I might as well go home. Come on. <laughs> What is that? Something left over from the Eagles convention? What is that? <laughs> I went out to my old grammar school yesterday, Fairmont Junior High, and there was the same old desk, the same old inkwell, same old shaving kit. I want to tell you it was thrilling. <laughs> what memories that brought back? I'll never forget second grade where I met my first girl. She was seven, I was 18. <laughs> and I was so proud. On my desk, they have a plaque that says, Bob Hope slept here. And today I went back and saw the house where I used to live. Boy, what a tough neighborhood. It was so tough the freight trains used to tiptoe past. <laughs> but it was wonderful. I'll never forget when I left home to go on the road, Father said I would go a long way. In fact, he nailed the door of the Bucks box cop. Though, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> In fact, he nailed, he nailed the door of the box. I know, we heard it. We know the joke. We know the joke. That's why you could have come in, you know. Now, what are you doing? I want to know, what are you doing here? I'm getting laughs. What are you doing here? (laughs) I'm trying to. And, hey, Bob, here's one of your boys, Bob Feller. One of our boys. That's an annuity, Jack, this boy. (laughs) Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. Two Bobs. That'll get you a warm beer in England. for letting me have that one joke. <laughs> I have a line you gave me, which is no good. It says, it didn't get you anything here, which you got a lot of. <laughs> well, look, Hope, let me ask you something. What, what, what are you really doing here in Cleveland? Well, I came here to watch out for my interests. I found out you were playing here, and this is my hometown, you know. Well, what about it? Well, how much money have you taken in at the Palace Theater already? Well, so far, about $34,000. Well, give me half or I'll sue you. <laughs> I don't muscle in the Waukegan, you know. What do you tell? I'm playing this whole circuit. Last week in Detroit, I took a $93,267.43. And a Hoover button. (laughs) How do you know? I ain't spending any Dewey buttons to see you. (laughs) You know... You know, Bob, you're cheaper than Fred Allen, and he's almost as cheap as I am. I'm telling you. (laughs) And Crosby's cheaper than all of us. (laughs) Lucky Strike, first again with Tobacco Man. First again with Tobacco Man. As a recent impartial survey reveals, more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. More than the next two leading brands combined. Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man. Yes, that's what the survey shows. Now, listen to a statement recently made by Mr. James Alfred Walker, veteran tobacco buyer of Durham, North Carolina. From what he knows, from what he sees, listen to what he said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy good, ripe tobacco, tobacco that makes a real fine smoke. I've smoked Lucky 17 years. So light up a Lucky. Puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. So smoke the smoke, tobacco expert smoke. Lucky Strike. First again with Tobacco Man. <laughs> 